What's up guys? Quinn Hennick here, Doctor of Physical Therapy from Juggernaut Training Systems. We're going to talk a little bit about static stretching. Obviously a popular modality as a warm-up or a cool-down. So we're going to discuss what we're actually doing when we're static stretching, when we want to do that, and if it's a performance enhancer or inhibitor. So what we think that we know right, kind of funny to think about that, is not a whole lot in regards to static stretching, but what we do see in the literature is that you can create short-term range of motion improvements, and that's just very general. If I stretch, if I do a toe touch, or I do some type of hamstring stretch, I hold that for 30 to 60 seconds, I will be able to stretch further and further, so we see that. The mechanism of how that happens is what we're not clear on. And so what we're seeing more consistently in the literature is that we're increasing the tolerance to the stretch over the course of time, rather than increasing the muscular cell density. So it has been thought, or kind of touted in the, in the blog world, that in order to create length in your muscle, you have to add muscle cells at the end. So sarcomeres are muscle cells in series. And it makes perfect sense in theory, and then the thought is that you have to hold a stretch for two, five, 10 minutes at a time in order to make this happen. It make per makes perfect sense in theory. However, we're not seeing that substantiated with a ton of evidence. And what we're seeing more and more is that when we can increase these range of motion, uh, these improvements happen over the course of, you know, in the moment, uh, over the course of six to 12 weeks, we're actually just increasing the tolerance to a certain position. So you have the mobility, it's there, and our nervous system is allowing you to stretch a little bit further. You're perceiving less threat in that new range of motion. So do we even want that? Is that increased tolerance to stretch or that new range of motion good or bad? And so there is evidence that you can have a slight decrease in performance after a bout of static stretching. And so what we're seeing is with stretches that are lasting a little bit over 60 seconds versus a shorter bout, you increase your range of motion, but you have a slight decrease in top end power output with something like a vertical jump. So a movement that requires shorter muscle lengths, if you hold a stretch and upwards of 60 seconds or more, you might lose two, three, four percent of your power on the top end. However, keep in mind that these people in these studies, were they were stretching and they were going right into a vertical jump. It's not actually realistic when we talk about how we warm up in the gym. So what we found on top of that is that you, if you add dynamic warm up or if you just have an empty bar routine, that you'll actually mitigate a lot of that performance decrease. So static stretching, especially upwards of 60 seconds, can decrease your top end power output. However, if you follow that with a typical dynamic warm up, uh, usually that power uh, decrease is mitigated to a large extent. Can stretching increase performance? Very limited evidence to say that it can increase performance, however we need to define performance because what we found is that longer muscle lengths, so movements that require more range of motion, stretching can actually improve your power output in that greater range of motion. So for example, if I'm stretching my hamstring for the first time and it feels very, very restricted and I'm asked to then fire my hamstring, it's more difficult than let's say if I go through several bouts of stretching my hamstring, I make that short term improvement, then I'm able to fire my hamstring with a little bit more force at that larger range. And I think this is important for athletes like gymnasts, dancers, even, uh, weightlifters, competitive weightlifters, who are moving and creating force in very, very extreme ranges of motion. And so I think for those sports, intuitively this would be the case that static stretching could be uh, beneficial. And then we get into something like injury prevention. So does quote unquote being flexible as a standalone protect you from injury? And what we're seeing is that it does not in isolation. So. We see examples of this in the clinic all the time. Somebody who can come in, comes in the door can do the splits three different ways, but they're, in, they're on my table with a hip injury or a back injury, right? So if, if flexibility was the gold standard in isolation, 
then we wouldn't have anybody lift weights. Everybody would just stretch and stretch and stretch, and that would be your injury reduction rate, right? That would be your, your risk program. So what we see is it's not, it does not prevent injury. Now, on the other end, what's counterintuitive is that we're seeing hypermobility is a slightly more, uh, higher, is a higher risk factor, mildly, than hypomobility. So the people who have all of that range of motion, super loose, you know, squat like a baby giraffe, but can do the splits three different ways, they are set up at a slightly higher risk because if you think about it, they're now responsible for all of that range of motion. They've got to control that entire range. And when we go back to saying that uh, creating strength at your end ranges is probably most important. So that's what we try to do as a, as a clinician. I'm thinking about improving range of motion based on the activity. So can the joints get into the positions for the sport? And then we work to increase strength along the entire range of motion. And in fact, eccentric muscle loading is a strategy to not only improve range of motion faster, but you also strengthen the entire range. And so I'm gonna give you two examples of eccentric loading that can be your new quote unquote stretch, but can also uh, strengthen you through a full range of motion. Okay guys, our first example of eccentric loading to not only improve range of motion specific to the task at hand, but also create strength throughout the entire range. And so we'll take a weightlifter, for example, and one thing that we'll use is a hip hinge or an RDL type pattern in order to quote unquote stretch their hamstrings or create length. Because for a weightlifter, at the top of that first pull, when our shoulders are over the bar, our knees are almost extended, that does create quite a bit of stretch to the hamstring. So we wanna make sure that we have that length and we have control in that range. And so I'll just have somebody literally do a weighted RDL, but we're sinking into the stretch. So Elena, will, she'll bend her knees slightly, just so you have a little slack there. And then we'll slowly hinge forward. And at that point of first resistance, or we call it R1, she's gonna pause, take a breath in through her nose, exhale all the way. And as she exhales, she's gonna let the weight sink her into a deeper stretch until she finds resistance number two that stops her. And then she'll do that again. Exhale all the way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All the while, do you feel tension in your hamstrings? Right, but she has to control that range because her hamstrings are also keeping her from falling on her face, right? And so it's not just passive mobility that we're gaining. We're getting that short-term improvement in range, but we're gaining strength. And so that's our first example is a weighted RDL. I would say three or four breaths per rep, no more than two, three, four reps because we're looking for quality. And once you have that change, once you feel loose, then you're into the barbell and you're doing your, your, uh, your warm up. Okay. All right, so our second example of eccentric loading, so not only create strength, but that short term range of mo motion benefit is gonna be for the upper body. We'll call this a pull over. So Elaine here is on her back. She's got her knees bent and her feet flat, and that's just gonna kind of create that neutral position as a starting point. Pelvises and rib cage are kind of facing each other. And so what she's gonna do is breathe in through her nose. She's gonna exhale through her mouth and just kind of pull her rib cage down as she goes overhead with this weighted implement. And this is super light for her. This is a two and a half pound ankle weight. You can use a kettlebell, you can use a, a plate, but this is a nice way to mimic the overhead position. But would you guys agree that we're also eccentrically lengthening any of the tissues that are going to potentially restrict or impede the overhead range of motion? So for an athlete, let's say for example, who hits resistance right here, you're gonna pause, you breathe in, exhale all the way, and try to reach a little bit further. But the exhalation and the breathing pattern just kind of locks in the rib cage so we know we're isolating movement at the shoulder. But she's not only stretching all of those tissues that impede overhead range, she's also gaining strength because she has to control. So this is an example of eccentric loading. Now of course, strength is relative, because this is nowhere near as heavy as a barbell, but it's gonna give you more of that stimulus than say passively static stretching. And so then what we can do is bring the hands in a little bit to mimic a more narrow position like you would have in a, a strict press, a push press, or a jerk. Same thing. Similar reps and sets as with the static or with uh, the hip hinge pattern that we use to stretch the hamstrings, 
two, three, four sets, three, four, five reps. You can see that the tempo is very slow, and so a smaller number of reps is gonna be best because if you think about an entire set of three to five reps in this way, you're getting a good minute of work in. And we had mentioned that static stretching for over 60 seconds potentially decreases your power output. However, this is not just static stretching. You're, you're, you are incorporating uh, muscle activation in with that, so it can kind of double as that dynamic warm-up. And I would recommend before training, in between your warm-up sets or your lighter sets of any overhead movement, so a press, a push press, a jerk, even a snatch, an overhead squat, you're hitting something like this in between to open up those shoulders. Okay guys, just to summarize everything that we've talked about and learned in regards to stretches, the time duration may be dose dependent, so the longer you hold a static stretch, maybe over 60 seconds, the more decrease in power output that you may have. Again, we're only talking small percentages here, two, three, four percent on the top end. But then keep in mind, if you add in some type of dynamic warm-up activity or dynamic stretch in between before your high power output, which most of us do, most of those performance uh, decreases are mitigated to a large extent. And you use that short-term benefit of the static stretching to get you into the positions that you plan to load more comfortably. So it's not a bad thing, but I think at this point, the minimum dose is probably the best uh, course of action. So if 30 seconds allows you to feel looser and, and get into more comfortable positions, then 30 seconds it is, and then go and load that new range of motion. And that goes into our final summary point, is that eccentric technique of adding load to a stretch to not only get uh, range of motion improvements a little bit quicker, but to also improve strength within that range of motion because we're not only combating hypomobility with our athletes, but we have many athletes who have hypermobility, all of the range of motion, textbook flexibility, but don't control those positions very well. And so those two examples that we elicited or that we showed uh, are, are examples of how we would uh, mitigate those, those effects. So check out clinicalathlete.com for a healthcare provider who understands athletes your area, the directory is on the website, search your area, and you'll have a provider who's gonna understand your performance goals. Thanks guys.